Hi, I'm Sandy, uh, and I'm here with Brett this morning. How are you today, Brett? Yeah, pretty good, thank you. Yeah, not too bad at all. Great. What are we going to talk about today? Well, think, uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, we've we've seen some people talk about um, you know, list rollups in SharePoint uh, a lot, and how you know you can do some of that in SharePoint out of the box now, but. Um, what we wanted to talk about was maybe some myths and misconceptions around what you can do with aggregation in SharePoint Online and modern pages these days. Yeah, great idea. So, um, absolutely. I think, you know, the, the brand of the Lightning Conductor is the, the fact that it's a SharePoint list roll-up tool, and, and that's um, what users are expecting when they see it. Um, but there's actually a lot more that it can do that people aren't aware of. Um, Things like the, uh, the the graph rollup and the, uh, the the search engine rollup as well, and you know I think also a lot of our clientele don't actually know what that means. Right, <laughs> what, right. What is I was going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you yeah. mean when you say graph charts, pie charts? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I think it'd be uh, a good thing to to actually talk about the, the capabilities beyond just the SharePoint list rollup. and uh, you know the other things that we can do with it. And and you're right to uh, also call out, you know. What, what can you do with uh, with SharePoint out of the box? Because I think that's also changed quite a lot over the years too. Um, you know, people probably have memories of the content query web part um, and the, the uh, uh, content by search web part as well, which you know were both fairly inflexible in in terms of building a view. It meant that you know you had to use uh, JSON, which was ad or JSON or XSLT, mm -hmm. um, but that also meant that um, it, it wasn't really a, an end user task uh, that, that would be building these views. You know, in, in some of these bigger organizations, they'd be having to put in change requests and uh, you know, billable hours from the developer team to deliver a JSON view that then can only be changed with more JSON. Right. <laughs> so it's not a flexible tool and it's something that has to be supported and maintained um, by, by the IT department as, as the needs change in the business. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, this is um, how things have moved on. There is the uh, the highlighted content web part, which looks nicer. It's uh, it, it it has some nice tile views. It's it's got the, the the carousel view and things like that when you're aggregating content, um, and it works really well with hub sites and associated sites. It's using search, so it performs well, and you know there's a lot going for that product. But it's still got that thing about being inflexible. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it, it it's not um easily customizable at all or in fact you pretty much can't customize it <laughs> so um yeah you, you're stuck with those views that, that microsoft deliver um so uh, you know that is really why the lightning conductor is still a, a, a good win and it's not just about going into that content served by the lists and libraries in classic site collections or in hub sites and associated sites it's about more than that and uh, i think yeah the, the graph is a good place to start <laughs> yeah sure so so um, yeah, the uh, as you mentioned, um, graph is something that is uh, not well understood uh, across business users. Um, they do use these other apps, of course. They're using Microsoft To Do. Uh, they're using Microsoft Planner. Uh, they're using OneDrive and and so on. And the graph is actually something that helps us to go through and query that content, mm -hmm. so we can um, get at it through uh, through a REST API. Um, and there's a great uh, place where you can go through and, and play with this. It's, it's called the Graph Explorer. Uh, so anybody can get there, sign in as that your uh, your Microsoft account your, or your Microsoft 365 account, and you can build some graph queries. And basically in there, there's a, a tree view of all the different apps available through Microsoft 365. You, know, you can get it users and messages and groups. Uh, you can get it um, teams and OneDrive items. You can get it SharePoint lists even. Uh, so a whole bunch of stuff that is available and there's a lot of get requests and, and post requests that you can just utilize. Um, but it's about taking it. You're obviously not going to use those queries in that interface. You've then got to, um, without the lightning conductor, build your own solution that is going to make use of that REST API. Um, and, and that's really what the lightning conductor does. So you it already serves as the interface of choosing some of those entities that I've mentioned. So if you wanted to you know, display your planner tasks or uh, OneDrive items, whatever it might be, you can basically go through and select those entities using the lightning conductor. Um, 
change the query using an interface. So uh, you know, it's just a case of uh, ticking things like the me checkbox if mm -hmm. uh, if it's your tasks you want to bring back and things like that, um, and then selecting the columns and. Um, yeah, you can basically go through and see what columns are returned. Uh, so for things like uh, your messages, you'll see the uh, body preview, which is a good one, and the sent uh, date for, for that item, or or the two and the blind, blind carbon copy and things like that. Um, if it's OneDrive items, you've also got things like the, the title of the file, the file size and things. Uh, so really useful information. You can basically go through and select those columns and build a view of that content and use what the Lightning Conductor is also known for, all of its conditional formatting and right. uh, styling options to, to build a really powerful report. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, plus we've got our new styling options mm -hmm. as well and that's, com that's coming out this week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, in fact, it may even be out now. <laughs> I need to check in with the development team. I know it's a task for today to, to publish those changes. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, at least when this, this recording goes live, it's, right. oh, it'll true, be true. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that includes things like, yeah, the pill formatting. So yeah, I mean, I, that's the best way I know of to get that sort of formatting on items that are coming from anywhere in Microsoft 365, basically. <laughs> Very cool, yeah. I think. Yeah, definitely. And and combining that with the fact that you can build multiple views mm. um, and use um, you know, the list rollups and, and the library rollups, along with the graph rollups and the search mm. rollups, makes for some really powerful scenarios. So you know, one of those uh, scenarios is actually um, you know, Microsoft obviously got wind of the fact that people are creating their personal tasks in, in Microsoft To Do. They're creating their project sort of related tasks against plans inside of Microsoft Planner. Um, and yeah, you know, they created a personal app that you can go and add into Teams that mm -hmm. combines those two uh, so you can actually see those in one place. And uh, as you mentioned just before the call, they've done a fantastic job of that. It's, it's a really nice interface, a great way of, of seeing that content. Um, but the the one thing that's still missing is task lists. Now you can kind of read into Share, the fact SharePoint task lists. Yeah. SharePoint task mm -hmm. lists. Yeah, you, you can read into the fact that you know they've not been modernized. <laughs> <laughs> They're still on the classic user interface, which might tell a story. Um, but the fact a lot is of people that, still use them. Exactly, that's mm -hmm. where I was going. So so yeah, there's people still making use of SharePoint sites and still putting their tasks in the classic task lists. So. This is the kind of thing that you can do combining the multiple views, the task list roll up and also the graph roll up is you can bring in your planner plans and planner tasks and Microsoft to do items and task lists into one instance of a web part that can be displayed either in SharePoint or also in Teams. Um, so uh, yeah, that'd be great to whichever your, is your platform of choice <laughs> um, to, to have all of those uh, tasks it, within easy reach just change out the view and uh, and you'll be able to see with all the tasks mm -hmm. that you've, you've got to work on. Yeah, so in the lightning conductor, just to clarify a little bit, you add views and then those will appear in a drop down to the user. So uh, so the user can come in and choose which view they want to see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And those don't can be related or not related. They don't need to be. Yeah, it can be whatever you want. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So if you if you wanted more of a sort of my stuff web part, <laughs> it might be that yeah, you you want some documents that you created or you modified or uh, is checked out to you that type of thing. You know, I know there's out of the box web parts that do that, but that will be you know one view that you might have as well as bringing in your OneDrive items as well mm. in, into a separate view. Uh, so you could you could have those as well as your tasks <laughs> and uh, yeah, any messages and and that type of thing. You know, so all of you you, you can build the sort of all your content <laughs> in one place yeah. uh, coming to you and uh, you know that's it's just not human nature to go looking for that content it's not <laughs> you know you don't get to your computer and think I'm going to go from SharePoint site to SharePoint site to see if somebody's assigned a task to me <laughs> um, or to see if I left documents checked out or, or that type of thing but yeah the Lightning Connector can bring all of that to you mm. and, uh, and and basically yeah through things like the conditional formatting and and so on, make make it really user friendly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that I mean, that, that's certainly uh, something that does. Sorry, you're going to say. I was just going to say, and now we have some new JSON views in this uh, this month's release, which uh, you demoed a, a couple of weeks ago in our chat. But specifically to to do lists and planner tasks, um, where you can view them more as tasks rather than just a list. I mean, or you could view them in a calendar as well in the Lightning Conductor, which yeah. You can't do. I don't know if you can in the in the Teams 
built-in app. I'm not sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, so really, there's two main types of views: so the JSON or the grid view. And um, yeah, so rather than starting from scratch with the JSON, we've built a whole bunch of JSON views that you can just go ahead and, and use them, or even customize them further if you want to. So you can make them your own. Uh, but um, yeah, the, so the grid view is uh, is one where it resembles a SharePoint list view. Um, so you can add the columns, you can add the conditional formatting and, and that sort of thing and grouping and what have you. Uh, and it's really flexible. You, you can actually do all of that within the view itself. It's, it's really nice and easy. Um, the JSON view, yeah, if you saw something like tasks, as you mentioned, you may decide to rather than show that in a grid view, it's more useful to see in a calendar um, or if it is Microsoft to do. You might want to see that in in the JSON view, which is a tasks view, uh, and that allows you to add the tasks as well as complete the tasks and um, that that type of thing as well. So, uh, and yeah, there's like tile views for document libraries and <laughs> so on. Um, so yeah, whilst they are sort of fixed in stone, that's kind of like going down what we said about the highlighted content web part. We do um, make our code available. So what you can do is you take a, a copy of that JSON code and um, Basically, uh, yeah, make that file your own, and, mm -hmm. and you can make your own changes and uh, so on um, if if you want to. Or, or you start the... completely from scratch. Yeah, yeah, precisely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, I think you know th there's a lot to be said for what you can do with the graph, um, and uh, I think another myth is actually you know this is just a sh SharePoint web part. Um, a lot of people are working in Teams nowadays, and it would be really handy in the same way that we could bring all of that information from different site collections and hub sites and associated sites into a web part in SharePoint, you can bring it into a web part in Teams uh, <laughs> so that if that's where you're spending most of your time, then it's all there. And mm -hmm. uh, combine that with you know, a lot of these uh, these graph queries that you can do. Um, yeah, you, you can bring all of the content into uh, some nice views or, or separate views even in, in different tabs. Um, across the teams that are relevant so, so that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense so you know if you think um, maybe you've transitioned from using a site collection in the past for things like R&D uh, you may have document libraries that have got uh, you know uh, document plans from from being a product manager and uh, documentation and things like that and then you decided to use teams more uh, instead of using that files tab uh, for, for teams and, and moving all your content and you could just aggregate it all from that site collection and right. all the sub sites you know uh, in, into one view inside of teams and i think that'd be uh, great to have all that content just there mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for that team mm -hmm. so it's not always about your personal content that you're aggregating um it, it can be of course yeah your <laughs> department's content right. that, that you're aggregating and it'll always show just what people have access to see in SharePoint. So it's still using the SharePoint permissions in that case, but presumably yeah, in, in your scenario, your R&D team had permission to that old <laughs> uh, development site. And so then they'll see the, they'll be able to see the documents and you could use it either as its own tab in Teams. So you can create a lightning conductor tab or if you wanted to say, for example, combine uh, connect lightning conductors or with filters, which we we're probably going to talk about, <laughs> um, then you could do that on a SharePoint page and expose the page as a tab in Teams. So you'd have sort of a dashboard. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, the, the lightning conductor uses web part connections ever since that was available for, for the SharePoint framework. So that does mean that it's not available in SharePoint 2019, uh, but um, because that uses the connections version. part. The connections part, yeah, it doesn't work in, in 2019 because of the, uh, the SharePoint framework version. But in SharePoint Online, um, yeah, you can connect multiple Lightning Conductor instances together. You can get to environment variables like query string um, uh, variables. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get to uh, uh, other web parts as well, like the Lightning Filters web part, um, or even connect to our Data Viewer web part as well. So yeah, you're right that if you built a page, you really can get a dashboard. So the filter web part would allow you to um, maybe make a choice. So if you were aggregating content around, you know, um, uh, that was people centric, uh, you may have uh, tasks and documents and things like that that are um, created, assigned to, modified by lots of different people. So you could add the lightning filters web part at the top with a people view, select a person, and then it could aggregate. Um, all of that content and filter it out based on that person that you selected. Uh, so that could be yeah across uh, multiple instances of the lightning conductor. Um, 
and you could also have the data viewer which is a charting tool <laughs> uh, so you can have that connect to a lightning conductor so when you're aggregating all these tasks planner items whatever it might be um, you could also have the chart uh, built on that as well and yeah like you say you display that entire page inside of teams and uh, you've got a really powerful mm -hmm. um, dashboard there for viewing content yeah yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of my favorite things also is uh, we talked about the multiple views. Um, you can select those views, not just in the view drop down in the lightning connector, but also via a web park connection. So, uh, so you can build all the views and then have the lightning filters web part actually present the choices to you. Mm. Uh, so you can select one of those choices and that would power the, uh, the view selection mm. um, or even load the view from the query string uh, mm -hmm. URL too. Mm -hmm. So works, yeah, yes. yeah. That, I mean, that was something that people used to use a lot in on-prem, especially the the query string parameters, like where you just build one page, uh, but be able to display things, you know, project by project, depending on something that's in the query string coming from a link somewhere else. And now you can do that with the Lightning Conductor, and yeah, and then with Data Viewer to create charts. Yeah, <laughs> super cool. It is. Yeah, it's it's really nice, really slick. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some 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 great uses there. And uh, I mean, do you have any good customer stories about how you know some of this stuff is being used? Uh, I was thinking of one. Yeah, one of our customers is using that to aggregate is using the Lightning Conductor to aggregate announcements from their global organization, and um, they've built their own JSON view of the announcements. It's sort of like a a fancy card in a way because there's an image and some text and colors and things and they're branding um but then they're all aggregated through the lightning conductor uh through they're just i think standard sharepoint announcements lists but then they've used our taxonomy filter in the free lightning filters to connect that on their page so users can come in and um, filter by the tags that they've built into their announcements. So if they want to see, you know, all the announcements related to Africa, then the user can just choose that out of the taxonomy or, and multi-select and things like that. And then it displays just the announcements that they're interested in. So I, I like that idea. Yeah, very nice. A mm -hmm. Absolutely. It looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's That sounds great. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we... Um, we have the new release of, of the Lightning Collector, so if you want to play around with any of this stuff, then uh, mm -hmm. you know it's there. Go go ahead and uh, and use it. There is, of course, a 30-day trial, so you can play around with with some of those features. And that and, includes uh, support. If you need any help setting things up, we're always happy to do that. Yeah, yeah, because it is a minefield. The uh, the things that you can do with the with the web part. So. Um, <laughs> Well, I yeah. don't know if minefield is quite the right thing to call it. It's more of a uh, candy shop. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So, um, so yeah, I, 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 actually, the, the one thing we didn't talk about too much there is search as well. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, yeah, search provider being one of the, uh, the other options. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, how, how have you seen search being used? I guess I would say people mostly use that if they have large volumes of content and it's just a little too much for the object model to be able to do. I mean, the uh, our object model engine has improved a lot since the beginning, since the early days. So, you know, it's much more performant than our old lightning conductor add-in had been. But, um, but yeah, if you've got tens of thousands of documents or something like that, then you've really got to switch over to search and then you get the results back instantly. And plus it's not subject to any kind of list view thresholds or anything like that. So um, I guess that's the main way that people have used that. Um, it's just a little trickier to configure. And if you want to, for example, use your custom columns, you know, metadata columns that you've set up, um, you just have to make sure those are created as managed properties in search and sometimes remap those so they're refinable. <laughs> um, so it does involve a little knowledge of SharePoint search, but once you got that going, then it's a really powerful way of aggregating the content. And you have to know that stuff if you want to, to do things like that in the highlighted content web part as well. Mm -hmm. Plus, you don't have the flexibility of actually displaying your uh, managed property fields. You can filter by them if you know what they are, but um, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. And if they're filterable. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, that 
great example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, fantastic. Well, um, I, I guess that's uh, all, all we have uh, for today with, yep, with regards to, to the lightning conductor. Um, so we've got uh, yeah the release that is is going out as we speak, and um, we've got uh, an exciting release looking forward to uh, as well for next month in in mm -hmm. April, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the uh, the lightning forms release. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, those two also work really well together. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're building custom solutions uh, using SharePoint, you can design your forms um, using Lightning Forms and then aggregating that content in the Lightning Collector makes for a really nice modern responsive mm -hmm. experience on the form input as well as uh, actually building the view too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and don't forget about the Lightning Conductor webinar too. People can still register for yeah, that absolutely. and uh, and see all this in action, ask questions live. It'll be a live webinar. So, yeah. Sounds good. And that is the 18th of March. Right, at, right. Uh, it, it's at the normal time for the UK, uh, which is 4 p.m. Oh, right. We we've uh, changed our clocks. Yeah. We'll have. <laughs> That's right. So the US changes their, uh, their clocks uh, uh, week or two earlier than the UK so um, yeah it's brought the time difference between the eastern time zone and the uh, UK time zone down to four hours rather than five mm. so, mm. so we've stuck to the same time in the UK okay. <laughs> so if you're in the US um, yeah it's shifted an hour from our normal time for doing a webinar so you'll find it's 12 noon eastern mm. as opposed to 11 a.m eastern so mm. all right okay. excellent well uh, good to speak to you again Sandy and yep yep good seeing see you, you all right bye